And now, The Low Post. Welcome to The Low Post Podcast live from an undisclosed hotel location in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, where I have been here for four days and it feels like I've been here for three weeks. And I'm very excited to be joined by... The head coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves, Ryan Saunders. How you doing, sir? I'm great. I'm great. I appreciate you having me on. It's uh it's it's a it's it's a fun time in the NBA now. Like the transactions are about done. You know, everyone's a little more yeah, relaxed. Yeah. Everyone's in Las Vegas having fun. It's a yeah, good time. Yeah, exactly. You can mi- mix uh you can mix the, the business of, you know, summer league and then, you know, get together with with people you haven't seen around the league at night and um you know, share stories and do podcasts with you. So it's great. So you've had a wild last year in Minnesota. Yeah. yeah. Even by NBA standards, it's wild. The NBA now, like everything is just wild. <laughs> yeah. But, you, but you're like at the like top 20% of the wild scale. Yeah, the last I'd say year. so. Um, Jimmy, Tibbs, you get the job. Tibbs out. Gerson Rosas in. Do you feel a sense of like, okay, all that happened and it's over now? Like we can, yeah. like, do you feel a sense of calm? We can just build a team now? Yeah, no, I, I do, I do, and it's a uh, this. I feel really comfortable with, um, you know, with our group that we have now, our staff, uh, in terms of being able to move forward. Um, and it's it's been, you know, it's been a trying year in a number of ways because you know you're in the NBA and you build so many relationships with people and you're around people all the time, and then you know just like that you might not see you know somebody for you know months or years now it's it's one it's just one of those things and you know i say that where you know guys get traded um things happen guys want to be traded uh but you know you you deal with it and then um you know obviously you know coach tibbs and and uh you know some of the guys that are no longer with uh with the timberwolves um you know having such cl- a close relationship with them for so long you know i'm i'm really appreciative to everything that that he did you know for me and my career with things so it's uh you know, moving, but we got to move forward, and uh, I'm looking forward to to the future in Minnesota. Did you think you were going to get to keep the job um, during during the 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 interim title time? I never really um, thought about the job. Um, for me, it, it really was, and I mean, I'm, I'm sure our our writers and and the media in Minnesota thought I overused the the phrase, but it's because I meant it. But I really did take it day by day. Um, did I want the job? Uh, once you're in it, yes. You know, once you're in it, yes, you want, you want the job. Uh, but you know, I, I didn't feel like I had to coach to keep the job. Um, it was just simply to, to try to get the team and the player, the individuals better each day. And then obviously try to try to scratch out some wins. And what about when the front office turnover happens? Because that's typically mm-hmm. when, okay, now everyone's wondering, like, is, yeah. is, is Gerson going to just bring in a whole new staff? Mm-hmm. Like, what was your, what was your initial reaction? What was your first, first meeting with Gerson like? And, yeah. and did you come out of that thinking, okay, maybe I actually have a shot now? Yeah, it's, uh, it was, it was unique because Gerson and I have had a friendship for, I don't know, I don't know, probably the last, you know, seven, eight years. Um, Tim Connolly, who was, I consider one of my best friends um, in in Denver. We were working together in Washington, uh, Tim and I, and he knew Gerson well. Um, we were all kind of a, a younger group, um, you know, trying to make our way up. And, um, you know, Tim put Gerson and I in touch. I was 23 years old doing player development and working on a, you know, we developed an iPad application that tracks efficiencies in real in, in real time. So we could use that in the game. Um, it's called Game, t- game Time Concepts. And with that, we... Um, the iPad hadn't even came out yet. So we had to, we had to manufacture our own like tablet from an actual MacBook. So it was a huge I think MacBook. I've heard this story. Yeah, it was a huge MacBook. So the iPad hadn't even came out yet. So basically we were trying to do something with technology before technology was really even. One of you had the technical capabilities to somehow deconstruct a well, laptop and turn it into something else? No, somebody a lot smarter than me okay. did that. Yeah, but but in terms of the, the basketball yeah. part of it all, we were we were able to put it together where, you know, it actually became something that was really helpful to us. And a number of teams started using it with things, but Gerson and I met through that where we, I was showing it to him, um, you know, possibly seeing if Houston sure. wanted to use it. Yeah, if you, you know, have a nerdy product, there. Houston is, is exactly. your first call. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't know, I don't know about that one, but but you know, we 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 did. We 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 talked to them and and uh, we we just developed a, a relationship, and then over time, we developed a relationship, um, you know, as friends. And uh, so, in terms of when he got the job, um, I knew that I was going to have an opportunity to to be in front of him 
with things um, and have a fair fair chance at it. Uh, and then we sat down and we and we realized that our our visions and our our ideals really were aligned. Um, and you know, obviously, he went through a, a process, which I'm really glad he did. And there were some great candidates that were interviewed. Um, but obviously, I'm, I'm fortunate that that I was ended up being chosen. So so let's talk about the Wolves for a second because it is it's funny you know we were talking about the West before yeah. we we've started about just how it's just a bloodbath every year yeah. in the yeah. West and it just keeps getting worse. You trying so to I'm make not, me feel good right now? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just being real. It's like it's just like like it just keeps getting worse. I was out to dinner with um, a few people, one of them which was somebody from the Jazz last night, and we were talking about what a great summer the Jazz had and yeah. how good their team is. I said, man, the worst thing that happened to you guys is that Kawhi created a freaking monster and th- with the Clippers. Like, all of a sudden, it's exactly. like, hey, we had this great summer. We built this great team. And then, like, bam, snap of a exactly. finger. I think the Clippers walk into next season as the best team in the league. And, like, congratulations, Utah. You know, like, you yeah. got a fight on your hands. But anyway, um, I've been trying to think, like, okay, so what did Minnesota do this summer? They traded up to get mm-hmm. Culver. Mm-hmm. Um, hasn't played yet. Um you know, did a couple like lost Tyus, which I'm sure hurt you a little bit personally, mm-hmm. but that's the job, as you said, this right? Guys come and go, yep, like guys you get close with come and go. Um, and you know, there was the D'Angelo thing and this and that, but like, I'm trying to zoom out and say, okay, so what do they, they have a, a, a foundational player, yeah. Carl Anthony Towns. They've got some other, it, it feels like this summer has been a little bit of a holding pattern. Mm-hmm. Like you didn't get one big free agent that you targeted. So you did a few moves here. They're like, what's the vision? Like, yeah. what do you see as yeah. the vision for not only this season, but going forward? Like what kind of team do you want to be? What yeah. kind of, what kind of offense do you want to run? Like what's yeah. the end game? Yeah. Well, I think that we had an underrated summer in terms of, you know, what, what we did uh, with a lot of our pieces that we added. I mean, a lot of, what we do is, is going to be, you know, how do we build around what, what Carl can do? And then, you know, ultimately Andrew, him, him being really into the fold and him, uh, being that great scorer that he can be. We're going to talk about um, Andrew. Don't, yeah. Don't worry. And then, uh, and then, you know, having pieces around those guys that make, make, you know, Carl's life easier. Um, we, we feel, you know, good about Jake Lehman. Um, him. It's be, a good signing. You know, Jake Lehman's yeah, a good player. Un- underrated in terms of what he does for a team. Uh, he's the, he's the type of guy that gives himself up for the group. Um, his ability to cut, his ability to make plays, um, how he gets out in transition, his ability to play the three and the four. I think that that's something that's, you know, his versatility is, um, impressive. And then, uh, we have a number of guys that we've, you know, may have had, um, I don't know if you want to call them rough starts to their career, but, but starts that people wish may, may, may be wanting more of. Um, so I think we got a group of guys that are going to be, um, hungry to, to prove something. And w- with that comes a competitive training camp. You know, we got a young, young team that, you know, minutes, you know, there's going to be some opportunity there, but you're going to have to win your minutes. Um, and that's something we've told, I've told all these guys when, when talking to them. And, you know, these players are, are really on board. I mean, we've had a great summer, I feel like, in terms of, um, building towards who we want to be. We've had a lot of guys out here in Vegas. Um, a lot of guys were in Minnesota, which, you know, people don't, don't get a chance to visit Minnesota in the summertime. It's unbelievable. The Midwest, the Northern yeah. Midwest cities gain the most from winter to summer of anywhere in the U.S. Oh yeah. Like Milwaukee, Chicago, yeah, Minneapolis, absolutely. like from winter, in winter it's a little rough. Yeah. In summer, as a New Yorker, when it's like 90 and humid uh-huh. and absolutely disgusting, yeah. those cities are awesome in the summer. Yeah, no, and, and Minneapolis is, you know, we got the lakes, everything. So players have been, you know, working out there and a number of the guys are like, I had no idea it was like this. Um, so, so we've, with that, we've been able to, to build something and really put our philosophy. But in terms of playing style, you know, we want to play fast. We want to play, um, with pace north south, pace east west. Everybody talks about pace, pace and space in the NBA. We do want to do that, but we, we want we want to be smart with that. And, and when I say pace north south, everybody wants to do that. But pace east west means you know obviously sideline to sideline, mm-hmm. moving the ball, um, getting into seams. We think Dr- Jarrett's going to be um, a big part of that. He's great getting into seams and making plays. I actually played some point guard at Texas Tech, so having him be versatile and him being able to you know rebound at a good size and then get out and push. Um, you know we want to play with an open open floor but also maximize carl's ability to score inside as well as outside so I, this is a this is a question that's come up a lot at summer league it's not a new question but it's something i've been thinking about more so can you win a title in the nba now with not just your best player mm-hmm. but your number one offensive option 
being a big man who operates a lot with his back to the basket. Now, Carl can obviously yeah, do everything, yeah. and that's, you know, he can pick and pop, he can catch and go, he can do mm-hmm. he can operate from anywhere. And I've said he has a chance to be the most versatile scoring big man in the history of the NBA, yeah, and I still yeah. believe that. But he's he's an interior player. And, like, I think about this with Joel Embiid a lot in Philadelphia. Can In an era where threes are everything and the yeah. math is just what it is, can you go all the way in the NBA with a number one option who's a post-up player? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do believe – Maybe, maybe, maybe not necessarily a full back to the basket post player, um, you know, that just wants to, you know, bump and bruise inside. But like, like you said, I mean, Carl is, is really versatile in what he can do. Uh, we actually put him, he was handling, he'd handling some pick and rolls yeah. last year. Yeah. Um, towards the end of the year. He must have liked that. Oh, big guys, big he, guys he, must have loved that. He, well, he loved, he loved it. Sometimes, sometimes it didn't work out, <laughs> but so I didn't love it, but oh, he loved it. He thought that was the greatest thing Utah ever. Utah a couple of times. They, the Utah had about six ATOs last year uh-huh. where they ran Gobert pick and rolls. Oh yeah. And I think it's just, like it didn't work. Did yeah, it? Yeah. it didn't really work. But I, and I hit him a little bit in one of my columns, just a little nugget. Like eh, I think you might want to bag this. Yeah. And it came back to me from their coaching staff or someone attached to their coaching staff. So, you know, hey Zach, it's an eighty-two game season. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta have a little fun. Yeah. Like, let no, Rudy exactly. Gobert have a little fun. Like, let him have a little fun. And and you know what? And that's a great point too. And that's that's. I'm glad you bring that up because that that's part of what you know. I believe in in coaching. Um, is a big big part of coaching is is the you know the communi- the communication and getting players to buy in and with that you know you gotta be you know one that you gotta know your know your stuff because players can can smell it you know right away if you don't but you also have to be able to you know bring them in where hey you know cat or you know gorgie jang whoever your five man is we're gonna run pick and roll with you this one play and they might be saying like wow he has that much confidence in me to try this um, you know, maybe you're not doing that, you know, six times a game, right? But you know, the the fact that you might throw something something like that out there, we're gonna post our point guard up, because um, you you might find that you that you you get something out of that, and maybe it's not a score off the pick and roll, maybe it's just the simple fact that there's a miscommunication because the five man has no idea how to guard, get into the ball, and ride a ball screen, you know, over the top or, or slide under. So then you're getting you know yeah. an open three on the backside, something like that. Um. If there's a skepticism about Cat around the league, it's everyone. The talent is just mm-hmm. prodigious. Like mm-hmm. there's just no question about yeah. it. It's does he care enough mm-hmm. about the grimy stuff yeah. to really take a franchise where it needs to go? Does he care, and particularly about defense? And so, like I've written this before about him. Like he moves on offense it, when he dives to the rim yeah. on a pick and roll and catches the ball at the foul line. It's so fast. Mm-hmm. That it's like alarming. Yeah. It's so like a a person that big should not be able to go north south seat. that fast. It's crazy. And then on defense, now defense the movements are a little different, right? He looks like so lead footed mm-hmm. sometimes, like he's stepping in cement. And I don't know if that's just he's naturally that's how he moves, or he needs to up his effort level. But like yeah. what when you hear that stuff about Cat, yeah. like how like how optimistic are you that there's a defender in there who like yeah he's going to care enough and he's going to be good enough to anchor you know when we get when we get serious to yeah. anchor like a top 6 defense yeah. in the NBA. I do I do believe in Cat in, in in that sense. I and I think it's it's his uh you know he he hear I think he hears those things and I do think he has he has a, a, a something in him that wants wants to be that great player. And I think he'll use a number of things to um to feel that now. And the fact that you know that defensively some you know people talk about him, you know, maybe not being able to you know, maybe not putting forth that effort. Um, you know, he, I think he hears that and we talk about it. And, you know, that's something that we've, we've done more, you know, film study this summer. We've talked, we've talked and talked at, at length about it. We feel we're going to have a great system next year that's, he's going to be able to be successful in. Um, but you know, it's, we're an actions over words team. So, so we're going to see a redesigned Minnesota defense next year, or a tweaked Minnesota system. Yeah, I think I think everything will be tweaked yeah. because you know with with the training camp, you know, last year was was going on the fly, and it's it's never that you know I, I was I was speaking at coaching you the other day, and one of, one of the things that I really wanted to talk about was that there I don't believe that there's no 
there's no right and wrong way of doing everything. Um, it's just your way. Mm-hmm. And so if, if you're the head coach, you know, it's, it's gotta be your system. Um, and it's gotta be, you know, your, your staff system. So I, I believe that, you know, we will have a tweaked defense, a tweaked offense with things, uh, simply because we'll have a training camp and we'll have, you know, we have different ideas. So, so, uh, speaking of cat hearing, hearing stuff, mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't even remember where I heard this. I see there's so many people at summer league. I see <laughs> like, I, I think. So obviously missing all NBA, there was a financial hit that he took, mm-hmm. but I heard that like he, he felt it like, Oh, Oh, oh I, I think I'm better than Rudy Gobert, but like the media, the people who vote on this, yeah. they didn't agree. Like, yeah. and, and they thought my stats were maybe a little bit empty. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, because the games were, there was nothing at stake. Did you have a conversation with him about missing all NBA? Did you hear that from him? Yeah. I mean, we, we had a conversation. Um, I will say respectfully, I'll, I'll keep that conversation sure. with, with Kat and I, because that, that's, that's something that as, as a, a player and a coach, you know, if, if we're talking in confidence on, on something like that, you know, you keep it between, between y- you guys. But, um, but I will say that he, he is motivated. Um, and I, I do see a different, um, level of, of commitment, um, to some things, you know, because he, uh, you know, he is very motivated. Let's flip gears a little bit. We'll get back to Wiggins. I, 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 I'm not ready for the Wiggins discussion. <laughs> um, does it like you're the coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves? Yeah. Your dad coached the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yeah. Can, can you? So this job must mean something different to you than any other job you could ever get mm-hmm. would mean. Um, do you feel that day to day? Like, do you ever think like? Do you ever think of how different it would be if you were the coach of? The, the Phoenix Suns, or just pick just pick yeah. an NBA team out of a hat. Yeah, you know, I I really don't think about about how different it would be. Um, you know, just because uh, I I I truly believe you know it. The days come with the the work comes with the, each day, and so really you know today I have my you know my list of to do um, things I need to do, and for that reason. Uh, for that reason, you know, I really want to just focus on what we have to do to get better as a team. And, uh, but with that, you know, I do acknowledge that Minnesota is, you know, Minnesota has been home for me. I was there. Some of the best times of my life were watching my dad coach the Timberwolves. Um, you know, really an incredible story, but also, you know, I understand the, the position that and the opportunity that I, I've earned in Minnesota. So I don't take that lightly, but it is special though. I believe someone told me that you have not only you obviously went to college at the University yeah. of Minnesota, and I believe I think the the pizza place is gone, but I believe there was a pizza place with framed University of Minnesota jerseys yeah. of some of the most decorated players in the history of the University of Minnesota, and you, yeah, Your and me. Was yeah, up, right? I'm not one of the most most decorated. <laughs> I'm not one of the most most decorated, but um, that was that was me. And my dad's pizza place we used to go to, yeah, uh, all the time. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's no longer there. What happened? Campus Pizza. You know, I think it's uh, you know how you know how campuses can turn over. I think they put some condos up or yeah. something like that. But uh, Campus Pizza. Did you, you get the jersey? I didn't get the jersey. I didn't get the jersey, but they always, you know, they always, uh, it was great pizza. So that, that was worth, that was worth the jersey. Uh, it was autographed. Did you no. autograph the, nope. just had your jersey? Just no, the jersey was there. Um, so you obviously grew up around the game and around the wolves and around your dad coaching. Yeah. Um, you were, you were KG's <laughs> ball kid. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What are your favorite? So that means you're rebounding for KG at yeah. games, before games, at practice. Like, what are your, what is KG like as, what is ball kid duty for prime KG like? So, so I, I was, I was an unbelievably quiet, you know, I don't know if, if, if you know, if people know, you know, the extent of KG's intensity. I, um, I well, <laughs> you probably talked about it a good yeah. amount, but, uh, but, you know, I was an unbelievably quiet kid growing up and, I'd always go, go down and I, KG, you know, I think he, he saw that I was, you know, a respectful kid. So he always seemed to put his arm around me. And, you know, I learned, you know, I learned so much from him. You know, I, I have three sisters, so no brothers. Um, but he, he always seemed to be giving me advice. Now, there was always some advice that my dad might say, Hey, he's not old enough to hear that type of advice yet. <laughs> but, but, uh, but he'd always be, 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 you know, talking and, and I'd always just be listening. I remember countless hours of sitting in the training room in the target center, just listening to Sam 
uh, Sam Mitchell, um, later on Sam Cassell, you know, Chauncey, KG, um, Gary Trent, these guys just talking. And, you know, one of the things with, with KG that, that we started as I got to high school and, um, you know, really started becoming a better basketball player and, and just by working, working at it was, you know, he, he had me come down with him, you know, late at night, sometimes in the summertime and, you know, rebound for him. And then, you know, this is an NBA hall of famer. He would re he'd say, all right, now it's your turn. And he'd rebound for me. And I'm just a high school kid trying to basically make it. Yeah. And he's, you know, he, he has that le- level of humility that he would rebound for a high school, a 15 year old high school, 16 year old high school kid, you know, for 20 minutes. Because I rebounded for him for an hour. And I just think that's, that's a really important thing that, that people might not always see in KG. Now, there are some good stories though, too. And I'll, I'll tell one of them. I was a ball boy when I was probably like nine years old, ten years old. And, uh, so he, KG always had his, his, uh, his routines and his superstitions and everything. So one of his superstitions was, and keep in mind, you know, I'm this quiet kid that, yeah. you know, I'm not talking a whole lot, but, um, but I worked hard and, you know, I was working the bench and he, he always take his warm up pants off before the game and he'd have to throw them, throw them to the ground. And, and I didn't quite understand that yet. I didn't know that that was his full routine. So he, he'd always have to throw them to the ground. So he took his warm up pants off and he threw them to the ground and I actually reached out and caught him. Uh oh. Yeah. And I caught him. And so I, I didn't put it together because he didn't say anything. And so he, uh, he, he, he goes like this and, and he kept telling me to, to, you know, put, throw him to the ground, throw him to the ground. And, you know, then I ended up and then he called him back and he th- I threw him back to him and he threw him, you know, he threw him again. I caught it again. Oh boy. And, and I, but I, I wasn't, it wasn't registering with me. Yeah. And so then I threw it back to him and he, he did it one more time. And I literally, I caught it a third time when I caught it the third time. And he started walking over and keep like the clock's running down. Like the game's about to start. He comes over to me. He takes the tearaway pants out of my hands and throws them to the ground right in front of me. Cause that was his routine. Those pants had to hit the ground before. Is there a profanity spewing out of his mouth? Oh yeah. 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 But, but like after the game, he didn't even realize that happened. Of course. You know, he didn't even realize that happened, but that's, that's one of my good, you know, interactions that shows his level of intensity. Yeah, he didn't lack uh, for, for intensity. I heard he tipped you mm-hmm. after every rebounding session, so and that there was a tips on top of tips. I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. He he, uh, he he tipped me in terms for get, carrying his bag. Um, he, I'll I'll tell this one. So when I turned sixteen, he tried to give me his green Porsche. That's not bad. And, you know, my parents shut that down. Pretty quick. <laughs> uh, did, did you fight it? Did you want the green Porsche? Not, not real. I mean, now I do. Yeah. But, but at the time, not really. Cause I, I would, I would have much rather been, you know, under the radar driving my, my Nissan that I drove through high school and, and, uh, you know, things like that. I, I don't, I don't know if the Porsche would have done well in the Minnesota winters too. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, he, that shows his level of generosity too. You gotta drive in snow. You gotta learn how to, you have a, have to good, have good snow tires, a good exactly. snow car. I'm not good. I don't like driving in snow. Yeah, I prefer nah, to just not. It's an acquired, it's an acquired skill. Uh, are you good at it? Are you a good snow driver? I'm not gonna say it yet cause, cause, uh, you, you, I, I'd like to think so, but we could have the harshest winter. You know, it always seems like each winter gets. So what I heard, he, he would tip you mm-hmm. and your dad would find out how much Kevin had tipped you mm-hmm. and double it and put it in the bank. Have you heard that story? Yeah. And so KG would go around saying, I, I funded Ryan Saunders yeah. college education. Yeah. That's no, he, cool. He did. He, uh, like, that's, that's what my dad did. Cause they wanted to, they wanted to, uh, my parents used that as a, um, I'm glad you bring that up. Cause I, I forgot about that, but, um, they wanted to use that as a, as a teachable moment, like not to just go spend your money, right? Put it in the bank and it'll, it'll grow. Um, now that's a pretty good interest rate, right? If it's going to double, yeah. but, uh, but you know, it, it, it's, uh, it was a teachable moment. So how, okay. Really, truly, how crazy was the Jimmy Butler practice? Uh, I mean, it, I think, I think that, that the, the media, you know, the media builds it up more than it was really. It was a competitive day. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. It was a competitive day. <laughs> It was competitive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it wasn't that crazy. It was, it was, it was competitive. It was on the scale of like, it was something. It, it was, was something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've seen, uh, 
hey, we, we just went from, you know, KG to Jimmy Butler. Yeah. I've seen KG in practices, you know, um, lose it, you know, in the, in the, it was Northwest Health Club. Now it's Lifetime Fitness, yeah. um, at the targets, underneath the target center where they used to practice. Um, I've seen KG, you know, kick a ball up into the stands and it's, you know, or up into up where the running track is. So it's, and people running around the track, you know, just the, the lunch hour, you know, warriors I trying mean, to they just get a workout in there having a duck, you know, cause they got a ball flying at them cause KG, you know, they might, they might have lost a game, uh, you know, in, in, in a scrimmage, but, um, hey, NBA things happen and things in happen. Practice. Um, yeah, you're, you were around, you know, the, the conference finals team mm-hmm. in 2004, mm-hmm. um, that lost to the Lakers. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, they, the, the series before that, people forget, you know, Sacramento took them to seven. Yeah. KG has 32, 21, five and four. Unreal. Uh, what do you, yeah, what do you remember? Do you, what's yeah. your, is there, is it that game seven? Is it being with the team in LA for game six? Like, you're, you're a teenager by that point. Yeah. Like, what, what, it, that's, from the outside, people would think, wow, that's so cool. A teenager, Ryan Saunders gets to be around the team. But from what I had read, you kind of took it as a serious opportunity to be like, yeah. I want to see what, okay, now we're at the highest level of basketball. I want to see what this is like. So what are some flashbulb things that kind of yeah. stick with you from that journey? Yeah, no, and I'm glad you bring that up because, uh, it's, you know, in, in terms of at at that, at that time, um, you know, the Timberwolves had never advanced like that. And, you know, I, I did say this year when, you know, there were some, some stories, um, you know, just being talked about, you know, my, me being, you know, um, the Timberwolves, you know, interim head coach, uh, one of my, my, one of my best moments I remember, you know, through whether it be childhood, high school, you know, adolescence was, you know, seeing KG on the scores table with a towel in a hand, in one hand and the crowd just going crazy and seeing my dad half court, you know, basically hugging the guys after the Sacramento win in, in, mm-hmm. and in game seven. And, you know, like that was, that's one of those moments that, that, you know, I, I call them moments of impact in life. Like that's to me, that's one of those moments that like, Things weren't the same for me after that. Really? Because I, I, I still think exactly where I was just, and that was kind of a moment for me that I was like, wow, I want to, I want to do this. I like, I want to be experience this with, you know, a group of people and a community, especially. So that's what, one of the things that makes Minnesota so, so, so special to me. I love the community. Um, and so like I'd say from then on, I did go to LA for the, the conference finals. You know, I, stay up late watching film with my dad and, you know, I'm 16, 17 year old high school kid, um, you know, watching film. We're going through, you know, okay, how, what are you going to do against Shaq and Kobe? Like things like that. And, you know, I obviously I give him a lot of credit because he, he didn't have to let his, his child do that. Um, but he, you know, that was who he knew it was important. And you, you watch film with him, like when you were a little older than that, right? Like little, whatever year old Ryan Saunders falling asleep on the couch at two in the morning. Yeah. That was his thing was always, he'd watch film really late. He, he, he loved to watch it at night and I just wanted to, you know, be around him. And so, you know, I'd, I'd watch and sometimes I'd just fall asleep though and end up sleeping on the couch. But, um, you know, hopefully you learn by osmosis then, but he, uh, he he always let me do that. Never never told me I couldn't. He let me come into you know coaches meetings, um, so I got to see how the back and forth would go. That's cool. Um, things like that. Yeah, at a young age. And that's that's just it, that would be cool to see because that's just that's where the that's where the sausage is made for strategies yeah, and like that's definitely. like it's a but it's literally you know it, there's a in the locker room in most locker rooms there's a coach's room and yeah. there's a big table and a TV and yeah. whiteboards and like coaches after games just go in there or before whenever yeah, just exactly. whenever you, whenever the head coach likes it like i know there are a couple head coaches who like to bring everyone after a game they'll crack a beer yeah and let's watch the game and talk yeah. about it like and that's when people are just shooting out ideas right exactly and and you know what it also shows how how to get your points across without you know everybody you know you have you have le- levels of you know a lot of levels of of expertise you know intellectual um people when it comes to basketball and then you have you know you have levels of, of ego um, in professional sports, so you can see actually how you know you want to relay um, what you're thinking and and what your ideas are in, in in a way that people will one be able to accept them or two be able to challenge them too, because that's ultimately what we are as a staff. Um, we're we're a group of people that have different ideas and we need to challenge each other to find what the best idea is. Um, so so back to you know that that conference finals yeah. run. So you you saw what Minneapolis is like when yeah. the team does something, mm-hmm. and then there was just a long dormant period yeah. of no playoffs. Mm-hmm. One playoff appearance with Jimmy, back out. 
this year. And, and there's always been talk. Anytime you read about the Wolves and the state of the Wolves, there's always talk of like, well, the season ticket renewals, there's no buzz in the arena, the business side is concerned, this and that. But like, is there a sense of, as someone who grew up there, is a sense of like, I, I felt it. Like there, there is a fan base here. Yeah. And like, is there, do you almost feel like an ob, not obligation, but like you want to see it yeah, back, right? Definitely. Definitely. And, and it's, it's that, it's that, you know, genuine love of, you know, as we talk about it more, you know, I, I guess I realize more and more how special the opportunity to be in Minnesota is for me as opposed to, you know, um, another, you know, another team, um, to have this be my first full time, you know, head coaching gig, uh, you know, I, I love the people of Minnesota and my family does and we love the organization. They've done, um, you know, we've, we've been afforded a number of amazing opportunities. And for that reason, I want to help, um, you know, grow the organization along with Gerson, everybody, you know, Ethan Cass and our CEO, everybody involved. Um, I want to help grow that into something really special and sustainable that people in Minnesota can really rally, rally behind. Your dad, while watching film late at night, mm-hmm. um, well known, had a QVC habit. Oh yeah. What's the what's the worst thing he ever bought on Q? What's the worst impulse buy on QVC that's Oof. that was laying around your house? Yeah, I, I got I got to think about that. My mom my mom moved out of out of the house last year, so you know I I, I remember going over there and us going through everything. But um, oh gosh, he 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 wouldn't like this one. Um, he bought the shake weight. Okay. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Shake weight was a sensation for like a minute. But did it really work? I have no idea. I never used I it. I think they did like, like some testing and I don't want shake weight people to come after me after, after I, pod- I know shake- everybody, I know shake weight really listens to, to the Zach. Yeah. Bull I was going to say, I don't know if there are shake weight people. I think it's still a thing. I think it's still is, is it a thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, he, he bought the shake weight. Actually, I'm like, I'll admit I'm not a QVC guy because it's so much easier. But like I'm a late night Amazon guy. Really? Yeah. Just surfing around. Yeah, something. If it, but if I do see something on an infomercial, I'll look it up because they usually have it on Amazon now. Okay. Like I bought. I bought the other day. I bought. Have you ever seen this flex tape? The flex seal. No. Wait. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah they yeah. can. They yeah. can patch up a a, a it, boat. It like, dries up. Like yeah. Real, yeah. Yeah. They they patched. You got you got you got YouTube. Get on it. Pa- okay. They it can patch up a boat where water can't go through. Wow. I haven't used that sold I, you right there. I that, used, yeah, so that's 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 a, had a great infomercial. Yeah. I haven't used it yet. I haven't had had any reason to, but I bought it. There's been some great mops. Like there's been oh, some yeah, yeah. some really high tech mops where I've seen. Definitely. Like I don't really want a mop, but I kind of want that mop. Yeah, maybe it will make you want a mop. Um, okay, so <laughs> so the shake weight, the shake weight is was was purchased. Okay. Yeah. I just there's just so much I know crap. There, I know there were other ones though too. My my mother could she could help out. Um, but I know there. I'll, next next time we do this, I'll, I'll bring some other ones. There's just so much. There's a store. I'm not going to name the store, but there's a big retail store that if we pass one, my wife wants to go in uh-huh. and just see what's in there. Yeah. And I say that it should be the name of the store should just be crap for sale. Oh yeah. Because it's like why it's like why are we going in here? Like I don't want this lamp that is shaped like a cat. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's, yeah I don't yeah. need this like this thing in yeah. my house. It's just crap. No, it's a lot I, of crap. But but sometimes it's it's the fun of like finding something like that. I guess I love that this is you've done the new, you're doing the new age version. The of new age your version, dad's right? QVC modern. Calls. We're we're the modern NBA. What now? Now maybe maybe you should you should name the store so that they could become a sponsor of the podcast. I don't. I and don't then think you get free. And then you get free crap. Free crap. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay away from it. I'm gonna stay away from it. Um, have you talked to Ricky Rubio since he signed in Phoenix? Uh, you guys are tied to you, Miss Ricky. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I think Miss is a is a word that that I'm gonna save for my my wife and my and my son. Okay, fair, but fair. But uh, you know, I, I have a, I have a lot of uh, you know a lot of love for Ricky. Um, actually, he was staying here in the in the hotel um, where. It, over the last few days, um, so I've actually gotten got a chance to see him a good amount, mm-hmm. um, you know. And we've we were able to sit down and, and and talk, and I was able to show him pictures of my newborn son, and um, just you know, we we have our relationship is is more than basketball, and you know that's what I I want to be with a lot of uh, with with most of my guys. Yeah, who have you 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 you've talked a lot about getting to know the players as people. Mm-hmm. And I was texting with a few people from your organization, and I think last night you guys had a big dinner, right? Yeah. Uh, and then did, was Gwen Stefani last we night? We did. We, we, we all walked over to the Gwen Stefani show. 
I didn't know she was posting up here. She's, in Vegas. She's, got a, she's got a she she's a great performer, and I actually I knew more songs I think than I thought I was gonna know. I bet you're and we're of the age, no doubt. Yeah, you know, like like she did a whole you know a whole segment, um, you know of of no doubt songs, and she's she's talented. So there's so, there's there's my there's my uh, my plug for Gwen Stefani. There you Not go. that she needs me to plug her. No, she's doing all right. Um, but but people were like even at this dinner. Ryan and Gerson were going around talking to talking to players and like mm-hmm. showing a showing a real inclination to like I want to actually get to know mm-hmm. these guys. So so is there? Can you give an example of like a player that maybe you found some random common interest with, or there's like some player yeah. that you've bonded in a way that maybe kind of surprised you? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'll use I'll use um, a, a couple. The the uh, so last night. So we, we, we have a bunch of different tables at this, in this room. Players, everybody in the organization that's here in Vegas, um, is at this dinner, uh, of the, with the Timberwolves. And, you know, we, it starts out where a lot of times, you know, PR is going to sit at a table, coaches, front office, players. So we go in, we see, and Gerson and I, you know, we, we move everybody around. Two players at one table. There's, there's two coaches. There's a video coordinator. There's, front office there's somebody from the sales side so we moved everybody around so i i want to sit by nas reed um our, our two-way player mm-hmm. just turned 19 um unbelievably talented he's having a great summer league down here and we just start talking and he's you know he's a really re- respectful person and really he's he's quiet on the quiet side and we start talking and i learned that that he likes to draw in his free time and he's he's you know, a pretty good artist. And so we start talking and, and we're putting a barbershop in our practice facility. And so, you know, I'm like, Hey, Nas, man, you gotta, you gotta draw, you gotta come up with something for the mural in, in the, in the barbershop. We'll make it like a play players type, you know, Hey, you take ownership in something like this. And, you know, he lights up and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's little moments like that, that, that you, you want to, experience with the player because hey when february comes and you lose a couple games and you're traveling and you know these players you know 10 of the 15 guys hate you because (laughs) you're not there you're screwing them or they're not playing enough um you know ultimately they'll they'll go back to moments like that and they'll understand i believe that hey he he cares about my interests and not just me as a as, as a basketball player and i mean same thing the other night we we had a player um who we just uh who we just picked up and he, uh, uh, I like to soul cycle or do some sort of workout early in the morning. And so he was saying, yeah, I'd, I'd do that. And I, I told him, you know, we're in Vegas. And I told him, I said, all right, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm all booked for soul cycle, um, at 7 a.m. at the win, um, tomorrow. If you show up, I'll, I'll buy your class. I thought there was no, no way this guy was showing up. And, you know, keep in mind, I met him that day because we had just, just brought signed him aboard. And sure enough, I walked in. He was there before me getting his shoes on. So I ended up buying his class and him and I, you know, did a cycle, a spin class, um, in Vegas, you know, at 7 a.m. On, on like a, you know, a Saturday morning. I am not going to lie. I have not, um, I have not done anything at 7 a.m. in Las, in Las Vegas. <laughs> Except yet. get in. Except, uh, no, no, no. I, I, I've, I've been all right and that's it, but 7 a.m. I just, it's, 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 there's a lot of fun to be had here. And, yeah. and I'm oh, also, yeah. I'm also getting too old for it. Yeah. Um, I, I realize, um, that's, that's, those are good examples. Yeah. Um, are you in your dad's office now? Did you move in? Uh, yeah, I did. Okay. I did. Did you hang the photo of Rubio? I did. Pointing to the yep, sky? Yes, sir. That's a great one, right? It's there. Yep. yep. Um, and that's going to, they'll stay there. So, so tell the story about, so obviously y- your dad's passing rocks the entire organization, yeah. you more than anybody, but, but really, I mean, a tribute to him rocks the league and rocks the organization and everyone copes with it. In their different way. And I asked one of your former players, I'll say who it was, yeah. Dom, Dom Rudesh, a friend of mine now in Croatia. Well, that, one, of the, I, one of the best guys ever. Oh, he's the best. Um, I don't know where, he's playing in Europe somewhere, but you know, we've hung out in, yeah. abroad. I said, what, what do you remember about Ryan? And, and he gave me a, a couple of things, but he, he remembered specifically as, and, and he, and he told me it was, it was all of us trying to figure out how mm. we're going to move on. And he remembered specifically, he has an image in his head of where you stood on the practice court in the weeks or days or whatever following your dad's passing. Tell that story. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, uh, so, so, uh, you know, people, people that, that don't necessarily know myself or my dad, um, or our relationship, you know, I, I can't put into words now, like how close we were. Um, 
you know, he was my best friend, just everything. I mean, we did everything together. He, you know, he's my best friend. And, uh, you know, so when he passed, it was, it was, it was pretty sudden, you know, he was diagnosed, you know, um, you know, he was diagnosed, uh, I believe in June and then he, um, and then, you know, complications arose. And by the time October, you know, you know, September, October rolled around, we, we knew, we knew it wasn't very good. Um, but we, we wanted, you know, we wanted the family to be able to have our, our time without people, you know, so we kept it quiet, mm-hmm. um, without people really, really, you know, trying to find out the information yeah, and yeah, checking in yeah. all the time. So it was, it was pretty quick. Um, you know, so it, it was hard. It, it was very sudden, uh, with that, you know, it's for me, you know, I took a little bit of time away, but ultimately I, I wanted to, to come back, you know, to the team. Um, I got encouraged by, by my mother, um, got encouraged by, you know, people, uh, but it was hard. And so for that reason, you know, I'm it, like a, a week before, you know, or, or whenever he was, he was still around, you know, I remember where his office was and it mm-hmm. was in center court above the, uh, above the facility. For a while he had two offices. I remember him he did. Me yeah, he was the yeah. president and the coach. He's yeah. like, I have one is my spare office. I'm like, yeah, you got pick one. Yeah, exactly. No, he, and he used to call himself the cop, the coach owner and president. I like that. And whenever, whenever he liked to tell, you know, really try to put me, uh, tell me who, who was in charge. But, but, um, you know, with, with that, I had a very hard time going back into that facility every day and, and doing a job. Um, but you know, you, you, you find the strength, you muscle through and, and you have a lot of good people around you that can help you. And probably to where you're leading, you know, with, with the story, he, uh, he, I couldn't, I couldn't stand it in practice where his, and, and be, be able to do my job while looking at his office up there. So I, I'd always stand with my back. I'd stand under it and stand with my back to the office. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think, I think, uh, Damo explained a little bit that, you know, the players ultimately, I mean, how, how do you explain it to you? He just, he just said, you know, it, it was all over tech. So it's, yeah. it's, it's maybe not clean, but he just said, you know, we're all trying to figure out yeah. how can we pull forward? What mm-hmm. are, what is some, what is something each of us yeah, can do that, that's what it was. to pull forward and, and, to pull the organization forward, to pull you, Ryan Saunders, mm-hmm. forward, and you know what was one thing each of us could do, and there was one thing you could yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. I um, I told I told the group of of everyone, you know, because we we were maybe we were a young team, we were struggling at the time, but I told the group that I was going to um I was going to stand on the other side of the court and and basically face my worst nightmare of having to look at my dad's empty office um, that he's no longer. We'll never yeah. walk into again. Um, and, and I, I was going to do that for the team because I believed in the guys and I believed in, in the organization. And now you're in that office. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and actually, actually, I'm in, I'm in his, uh, head, head say, coaching which, office below, yeah. <laughs> head coaching office below. Who's in the other one? Gerson. Gerson. Okay. Yeah. Okay, two offices. That was two that's, offices, when you yeah. have two offices, that's badass. Then, then, that then you've really, you've really done well in life. Yeah, when you're like, which time. office should I use today? That's big time. Well, this is why, I mean, the whole league is rooting for you guys to be successful because yeah. it's a great story. It would yeah. be an incredible story if you guys can, if you guys can figure this out together and stay there and, yeah. and, and bring it back to where it was when KG was waving his towel on the score exactly. table and the place was on fire. Exactly. Like it's the special. place was absolutely on fire. Mm-hmm. And so it's a, it's a cool market and, and you got a player in cat and you know, we'll see. Um, so, so in order to take a step forward as an organization, I think there's another player who needs to take a step forward and yeah. that's Wiggins. Yeah. So tell me as a little bit of a skeptic, yeah. why should I have faith that it's going to happen? Why should I have faith that because because you see it right? Yeah. Like he scored forty against Oklahoma City, right? He had that monster game. Was it your first win? Yeah. He has the monster one. game, and everyone's like, "Here he is. He's responding to the new coach. Like there's there's something in Andrew that's brewing." Tell me why I should believe yeah. that that's still the case. Well, I mean, we we are we are in actions over words, you know, uh, organization, and we've been saying that this summer. So until we until we see it, you know, consistently. Um, anything I say, you know, really doesn't mean, um, you know, a- anything. Uh, but his commitment level this summer has been different. Um, he spent time in Minnesota. He's been going through the workouts with our young players. Um, he's been, you know, I, I think he, I think he, he hears what people say as well. He understands that this is, you know, this is a big year for him. Um, when you see his, his, his talent, like the talent that he has, 
I mean, to me, that's something that, that makes us, that, that can make you keep going. Um, because you see how unbelievably talented he is. Really. I mean, and he, the other day we were working out down here in Vegas and he, um, you know, we have a, basically a video, not intern, but associate, Greg Steamsma. Mm-hmm. And the Greg Steamsma. The Greg Steamsma. Wow. Steamer. Steamer. I didn't yeah. know he was with you guys. So, so he, uh, yeah. I mean, he, he will, f- if you need someone to foul, the, well, you know what, out of players so, in practice. So, so here's my story leading in, in, into Andrew. So he, he, um, uh, Steamer, you know, we got the, the stick, the pad, you know, mm-hmm. all, all the, all the, the gadgets that you use during game, during the game, um, or during, during practice, yeah. you know, to simulate, you know, physical contact yeah. and everything. And I, I'm like, Steamer, you know, grab a stick. He's like, no, I don't need a stick. I'm good <laughs> to, to try to block shots at the rim. We were working on finishing and like Greg's got some of the best timing I, I've ever seen in, in terms of blocking shots. Like he's, he's really, really good and he's still in good shape. So we were going through it was, it was, uh, Cat, Wig, and Jarrett Culver. So we were doing a drill where they were all having to finish. And Steamer is timing every one of their, their shots up and he is blocking every shot. And I mean, it, it was, it was actually pretty, we were all laughing as coaches because we're, we're watching, we're watching our video intern down there basically taking on, wow. you know, these guys. And so finally one, Andrew, it's Andrew, um, gets the ball. He rips through, he takes off. He puts a knee to Steamer's chest and he dunks on, on Steamer. And I mean, his elbow is like in the rim, but it's moments like that that keep, keep you going. That's what you, that's how the stories of like the coaches hanging with the players and practice a little bit. They usually end with the players being like, okay, I've had, this is cute. I'm, I've had enough of I'm this. I'm done. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm done with that. But, but, you know, Andrew, he's, uh, uh you know, I, I do see him, him maturing with things and, uh, I'll say, you know, I'll continue to say, I believe in Andrew. I really do. And I, I think that there's something there. And I mean, the, the youth is, you know, these guys are still, can still be considered young. Yeah. Um, I, but what is he, 24? Yeah. But, but, you know, I also acknowledge that it's time for us to not use that as, as, as a crutch. So, so I, I think if people have a, an image of Andrew Wiggins in their head, it's Andrew Wiggins dribbles around a screen and pulls up from 18 feet mm-hmm. or Andrew Wiggins posts up. We talked a lot about that. Yeah. And, and posts up maybe even a mismatch and, and, and turns and fades from 18 feet. So what it, it, is it? Do you want to see him run less pick and roll? Do you want to see him run more, but take threes? Yeah. Do you want to see him run more and take an extra dribble? Like what is it that you actually are envisioning for him to like tweak the yeah. equation of his game? I want us to be, be, educated and and smart with our shot selection and what that means is is us working on on the shots that that we want the high valued shots the shots at the rim andrew does a you know andrew gets fouled he that's the highest points per possession shot i believe it's 1.57 uh you know points per possession shot value wise he you know he's good with that now obviously extending the range to three to be a consistent three-point shooter is going to be a big thing for him and, you know, we've been working this summer. I mean, we, we do very little in the mid range. Um, but now, do you, do you now think it just he, needs to translate. Do you think he can take off the dribble threes? Like there's consistent three point yeah. shooting, but clearly catch and yeah. shoot. He's just got to get better. That's going to be a part of his game. But do you think he can become a ball handler that can pull up and take threes? I do. I do. And, and I think, I think it's, it's, uh, you know, he has things within his, his game that, you know, he's not a guy that, that needs to, um, you know, chop his steps getting into his shot. Like he, he's got a good flow to, to his offensive game, how he moves when he's moving at, you know, the pace that we want him to play at, which, you know, we're going to continue to, to stay on him with. Um, and, and when he, when he's playing at that pace, we feel that he has a good rhythm that, that he is able to shoot the dribble up threes, you know, the walk ups, um, shoot off pick and rolls, be able to read the defense guy goes under if they repick the screen, things like that. He, he will, f- he will throw two or three passes in a game that will make you say, oh, there, there's something in here. Yeah. That he, he sees it a little bit better than you think he sees it. Can he, is that something that can come out of him a little more? He, do you think? He was, he was really good with that. And, and I think you're probably thinking about the end of the season last year. He was really good. You know, I, I want to say his assist total, um, Rose, you know, two or three. Like he'll hit the corner. He'll yeah. hit the weak side corner. He'll, he'll drive baseline. You know, he's got a great first step. He'll drive baseline and he'll, he'll be able to hit the, like you said, you know, the baseline corner guy, that guy off, you know, getting the baseline drive, baseline drift, or the, if there's a hammer screen, something like that out of the corner. And then he, he's able to, 
you know, make plays in that way. But we actually played him at, you know, and, but it was kind of, we had to because we didn't really have point guards. We were, yeah. in, we were Everyone so was injured. depleted. Yeah. Um, but he played point guard the last few games of the season. And, you know, we, we saw some things that we liked out of him doing that, uh, which has made us, you know, want to tweak our offense and, and become where, you know, other guys can initiate it. Um, how, how well can a Kogi shoot it? Yeah, he, he can, can he get to a point where he's going to be able to stay on the floor in like really high leverage games? Cause that dude physically mm -hmm. can do yeah. some stuff that is rare. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's going to continue to be a work in progress, but he's, I, I can say that there's, there's been nobody in the gym more than him, him and Kata Bates, Bates D up mm -hmm. uh, in Minnesota this summer. I mean, they're working out multiple times a day and you know, the three point shooting is something that, that he's really focusing on. Now we need, we need to make sure we trend, you know, we trend that in the right direction when it's in game situations. And there were a couple times this year that he hit big, like if we can get him to be a great corner three point shooter, um, which is, uh, you know, behind, behind layups, behind free throws, that's the third most mm -hmm. efficient shot value, um, in the league. If we can get him to be become a very good corner three point shooter, we feel very good about where, um, where this team is going around Carl because we, we need that. I remember, I mean, he had a closeout. It was against the Spurs mm -hmm. in the left corner mm -hmm. where I, I, it made me do like a triple take where he was sprinting to close out on a shooter, hand up, yeah. and then hit the brakes. Oh, yeah. And the guy tried to drive it and he was like, nope, With I'm totally chest, right? well balanced. I was like, that is, there might be 15 guys in the NBA who can close yeah. out that well. He's, but that's, that's a big credit to him because he, he learned as time went on that when that happens, that you use your chest. That you don't use use your hands. You, you're not, you know, because he he was he was fouling a lot. Yeah, rookies early, do. Early rookies do. Um, but he's. I think that that's a credit to him and his one coachability. But but how he too, it's it's his commitment to the team because he he knew that you know when Covington went down, um, we needed him. We needed him to play. By more. the way, sneaky big injury. You guys were good with Covington. We were. Like there was there was a stretch where it was like, oh, this team kind of looks pretty coherent. Yeah. It looks pretty yeah. good. Yeah. No, it, it it was, and I actually I never had the opportunity to coach him. Yeah. Um. So you know, I'm I'm looking forward forward to that and having more, um, you know, defensive bodies. Couple quick ones, and I'll let yeah. you get out of here. Um. When you, uh, my friend John Krasinski wrote a great story about when you went to Todd Gibson mm -hmm. and said, hey, it's time to get Dario in the starting lineup. We're gonna have to bring you off the bench and and how you approached that conversation how you were nervous for it and you said just something in the story that struck me you said you know i have people around the league i can call you know i have guys i call for advice who, who like can you who do you call for like what's when you're at your age and like who's your circle who's your guys yeah i mean there's uh you know there's there's people around the league you know i'll, I'll call other you know assistants mm -hmm. i know i'll call uh um, some front office guys I, I know that I trust, um, you know, out of DC that I, I had worked with. Um, and then also, you know, there's, there's some college coaches like Coach Izzo and I talk, um, from Michigan State. We talk, you know, you know, at, I'd say during the season every other day. Wow. And we, it's bouncing a lot of those things off. But, um, a couple of guys I, I really respect in this league who I talk to during, during the season, like, like Spo, mm -hmm. um, you know, I got to know him well. And so I bounced a number of things just, off. Just, just in coaching circles. Yeah. Basically. I got, I bounced a number of things off him mm -hmm. just to, you know, Hey, you were, you did this at a young age. How, how did you approach some of those things? And then, um, one thing I learned, I learned too is that NBA, NBA coaches, especially, and especially I'm just going to use the head coaches. Mm -hmm. They're much better people than, than a lot of, you know, people who just are on the outside looking in, mm -hmm. even know. You know, Brad Stevens reached out to me and he was, you know, very, you know, Hey, if you need, you know, if you, if you have things that, that you, you have questions on, you know, let me know that type of thing. Um, just in terms of the day to day, not schematically things like that. We don't talk like that, but, yeah, yeah. but just in terms of, you know, how to, how to manage, you know, the, the, the grind of being a head coach. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of good people in the league. Uh, it, they're very busy too. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, so it's yeah. a, it's a credit to their character on, you know that they do that. Uh, do you have any uh, favorite Sam Cassell stories? Underrated oh. NBA character. Like everyone wants to hear the KG stories. I kind of want to hear a good Sam Cassell oh story. Because you have, were with him in Washington. Yeah, so I have you've way, been around a lot. So I have way too many Sam Cassell stories. I just we don't we're we're towards the end of our, our yeah. time. So I don't think I think we're going to need a whole podcast. Okay, to, but just Sam Cassell. Sam Cassell stories. Um, and that's kind of on the spot. So I got I got to think. 
I got to think, but we were in D.C. together for five years. You saw some stuff in D.C. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, we're we're going to stay away I'm, from some of the other stuff. And I actually, I actually, NBA TV, my, my interview during the second quarter yesterday during our summer league game was with Karan Butler too. Oh boy. Yeah. So we both kind of looked at each other like, man, last time we saw each other, it was, it was, there was some stuff happening. Yeah. But, um, with, with Sam, I mean, I mean, some things that like you talk about, about, you know, players and, and players and coaches playing in practice. Um, I'm just going to use this cause this comes to mind, sure, yeah. but like, like Sam, when, when you say that there's, there's times where players are like, okay, enough with the coach, you know, kicking my ass. Like huh. now it's time to turn on players would try to do that with Sam. And like if Sam had the ball now, not defensively, not defensively, <laughs> but if it was make it, take it. And Sam had the ball, yeah. you were not getting the ball back. Really? And I'm talking about like, this is Sam at 40 years old. Yeah. This is Sam at four years old and him playing whoever in one on one. Like you are not getting the ball back. How big you are, how, how small you are, how talented you are, because he was so good at, you know, that mid range fade away, just shooting, um, you know, shooting that thing so high, but he'd let you know he'd, he'd talk, you know, the whole time. I'm not sure any coach in the NBA talks more than Sam Cassell. No, like they need to mic him up during a game and it would be a three hour show. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I will say this. I will say this one. This is a pretty good one actually. Actually. So during a game, during a game in DC and Sam won't mind, Sam won't mind. I told, I told you this one. Um, but during a game in DC, uh, we were, it was, it was a rough game. We had a younger guy who, who was kind of playing his way out of the league. And during the game, he, you know, he came off the court and he was, he was pissed. He, he was, uh, that he was taken out. was taken out and stuff. And so he went and, you know, he's, he's complaining as he's walking off and he goes and sits down. And, and, uh, so we're all just sitting there and, and, uh, you know, he's, he's yelling, he's, you know, cussing and everything. And, and Sam yells down and he goes, Hey, and so it got really quiet when Sam, you know, Sam's got a loud, booming yeah. voice. And when Sam talks, you know, you listen because you never know what's going to come out of his mouth. <laughs> and Sam goes, Hey, Rosetta Stone. And everybody looks at him like, what? And so somebody goes, what's that mean? He goes, Rosetta Stone. And people look at him. And he goes, cause you're going to be playing overseas next year. You're not playing in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Yep. That's pretty good. Here's a tip. Yep. Start learning some new yep. languages. That's but there awesome. were there were a lot a lot of other words involved too. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure there were. Yeah, I would like to have him mic'd up during. You got it. All right, you got to go. You guys play today? No, I, I've no. lost track of the summer league. No, schedule. we're we're. You're uh, a powerhouse. You're like the favorite <laughs> right now. I think right. I, I don't know. I don't know. I want to put pressure okay, on Pablo. Okay, all right. I want to put pressure on Pablo. We don't play till Saturday though, so we got a couple of days. Um, I got to get to practice. So. I forgot that Prigioni is your is your coach. He's, yeah, he's a we have a great, he's awesome. We have, we have a great. Uh, group. All right, Ryan Saunders. Good luck with the Wolves. I look forward to seeing what this team looks like next year and what you do. Congratulations on everything, and thanks for making a little time for us this morning. Thanks, Zach.